Oh, here we go. Hi. Hey, Robin. How are you? Hey, can you hear me? Yes. Oh. I hate oh, Skype God. so much. I hate it. It's the worst. Well, I, I guess I was being a little retarded because I, oh, you know. Oh, wait a second. You can't say that. Say mental. Mental. Good. Excuse me. Oh, man. Man, you're going to alienate half my audience? That's what everyone says. No way. It's, it's totally disrespectful. What are you talking about, Robin? Uh, my but Lord. let's talk about Skype and how annoying they are. They just asked. They said my my location and my my device <laughs> location needed me to give their my birthday. And Ooh, then I had to do really? a confirmation on my phone birthday? and email what? after resetting my password. So oh. I'm sorry I'm late again. Wow, I thought it was my I thought it was my fault because <laughs> Stephen Reichland and I weren't being able to connect right to each other. Uh, so I always figure it's on my side. But nevertheless, let me yeah. quickly ask you a question. Um, and did you see the cute dog behind me? Let's see. I have some a cute. There's some cute dog action right behind. Let's see. You might. Anyway, there hey, you go. Hey, there you hi, go. He says hi. Yeah, he he seems very <laughs> enthralled with the whole conversation. Hopefully, He's I'm not. I'm putting him right to bed. Um, what is uh what is uh, Scott the Hunter? used to take down ducks what kind of load i have no idea i honestly have no idea he just has like guns pellets? everywhere and i have no uh no he uses a shotgun i think oh well like little pieces of metal they're like little yeah they're like yeah. little pellets little bbs all right so he's, he's yeah. using some kind of bird shot or something to take those ducks down all right uh -oh. yeah i just asked him about the moulard that you were talking about and Not, I did he say mallard it. Did he no, say? Did he, he mean? Said, he knew no, what I was talking about. He hadn't heard of it either, so I gotta oh, get. Okay. I gotta get on the Google. Well, he's gonna be. <laughs> so he's probably gonna be tuning in in about forty minutes to hear about all about the Mular duck, right? Yeah. Yeah, I absolutely. bet. New fan. New fan. Um, yeah. Let's quickly talk I'm about. I've the... tried all kinds of weird ducks, so I'm excited to hear about theirs. Weird duck, great. Um, <laughs> let's quickly talk about the amazing tube, smoke tubes, because I've had a few centralites ask me about. Should I get one or I have this kind of a cooker and I, I've heard other people have them or I, they're, maybe they've clicked on them one time or they did one search through Amazon and now in all the little pre-fills, it's showing up every single time. And now they're it's in their face and they're wondering if this is worth the money. And I said, you know, I have one. I've really never used it, but I think Robin actually has one. So when she's on the yeah. next time, I'll ask her about it. So talk to me about your experience and QPR and overall value of uh, Maze and Tube. I, you know, I actually think it's really cool. And I, I bought it um, hesitantly, uh, but mm. I was trying to smoke uh, some salt to give away as like Christmas gifts last year um, in 2017. And I was using my pellet smoker and I just felt like I couldn't get the salt smoky enough as you would expect it to be. Like I like to buy smoked salt from uh, bourbon barrel foods and I couldn't get mine as um, smoky as theirs. And I talked to Jason Baker at Green Mountain Grills, yeah. and he said, did you use a smoker tube? And I was like, no, what's that? <laughs> and so, um, yeah. And so then when I was working on my project um, this past year that will be coming out, I can't wait to tell you guys what it is and give you more details. But I uh, developed a recipe for smoked salt and pepper, and I used a smoker tube for it because you have to use a smoker tube in order to infuse the smoke for certain things, right? And so I think they're cool. I mean, gosh, what are they? They're less than 20 bucks. Um, um, yeah, and the thing is too, is it's like, I think what's the nice value add is that if you have a gas grill, you can easily add smoke that you would never otherwise get by just throwing a smoke or tube on there. So you really have like the best of both worlds. Like quick and easy of gas if you're doing like a quick weeknight grill and you're mm -hmm. just like, oh crap, I'm in a hurry. But it's going to be so much better if you can add a little smoke to it, right? So um, I think they're a great value and add a lot to the overall taste. And um, yeah, I put them in my gift guide last year. Oh. So I, I'm a fan. Okay. Um, one of the main things that we wanted to talk about, and I appreciate your thoughts on that. I'm sure the other dudes that were asking me will now probably yeah. race out and buy them, getting the Grill Grill seal of approval. The Stay Cook-Off Association, is this something you're going to be doing here? At, uh, I mean, what is it, end of the month it looks like? Yeah, I'm really stoked. Um, January 25th, it was my dad's idea to do it. So we have paired up with um, Jeff uh, Solero, if you know him, 
and uh, he's with Texas Holy Holy. Wait a second, Texas Holy Roller Smokers. I think I'm messing that up. I'm a little. By the end of the day, I just have to say I'm a little brain dead. I think it's just hashtag mom life. Um, but anyway, so uh, me, Dad, and Jeff are pairing up. So Jeff is the guy that's helping the shed out a lot with their sponsorship. So he brought it up to us, <laughs> and um, we're like, let's do it. And you know, I've always I've done Memphis in May, and yep. I've done a few like. Um, I've judged some FBA things here and there. No, actually, no, I've taken the class, uh, but I have never done anything SCA and I'm really stoked because it's really more my style because I freaking love steak and, um, I'm more into grilling. I, I like the hot and fast. Um, I'm, I have, I have less patience than some, you know, uh, so I'm, I'm stoked. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And plus I've never visited the shed before and those guys are like my family so just to go hang out at their restaurant and see what it's like behind the scenes is going to be super cool yeah so that's going to be january 25th so what are you doing preparation wise to make sure that i mean look the uh the sca or steak cook off how do i want to say this right the, the competition steak scene as a whole has really exploded sca is obviously at the top at the moment there's two or three other different stake sanctioning bodies that are out there now. One's based here in Columbus, Ohio, believe it or not. So it's really? something that, oh yeah. So it's something that is really growing across the country. As you said, great access, ease of access, uh, something that everybody can do. What are you doing for prep? And I know I have some pictures that I could be uh, flashing up here while you narrate. Yeah. So, um, you know, I think, I think the, the way to success is to copy others who have been successful. Right. So um, I don't know. I mean, isn't that just the easy way out? Isn't that what's happened to competition barbecue? Like everybody's copying yes. everybody and that's why everybody hates it now. Well, yes and no. I think I think barbecue just got to be like so too much of everything. And it's, you know, not everyone can afford to spend that much money and that much time it's a major time and cost investment to do competition barbecue. Forget and investment. It's a, just a straight up expense. Yeah. And I just don't, I think that the, the steak cook off really brings people back to more of what they love, which is cooking in their backyard and being behind a grill and a fire yeah. without all that other pomp and circumstance. And um, the barrier of entry to have these big, large sponsorships and to be a caterer and to have this big ass like van or truck or whatever, yeah. just to even get into the scene, you know, and I feel like it just, it's, it's nice. I think it's like kind of like, like the kettle grill is the democratization of grill, which I've always said, because it really, I feel like puts everyone on a, on a level playing field. I feel like the SCA is kind of like that. And um, I'm excited to participate in my first one. And, I mean, you know, Greg, anytime people start getting in a competition, it, there's stuff that's going to happen and people are going to start being like, oh, this guy does this and blah, blah, blah. And, and, you know, but you do have to learn from those who have been successful. So, you know, like John Dawson told me about, and now I'm drawing a blank, um, the guy from Cosmos Q won in, I would think it was 2000 in, or 15 and 16. And so dad and I have been watching his videos, Malcolm Reed, of course, um, and, you know, of course, a lot of these guys have won and then their videos, they plug their rub and good for them. That's a great reason to do it, but it doesn't mean you have to use a rub. So like what dad and I did, we just cooked steaks all day this Sunday and we just did a lot of um, preparation and uh, there's me and dad. Um, and I mean, what a fun day, right? Me yeah, and dad it's practicing great. Practicing in the backyard. Right. And By the way, Scott shout out to Eddie Medlin. Love that guy. Shout out. We love Eddie. And you know what? We didn't even get shit faced that day because he <laughs> hung over and I mean he whoops he came over and he was hung over and so was I. Wow. Um we were both it was just like we hadn't been together. We just happened to have just you know, sometimes it just sneaks up on you. It's in the blood. And, <laughs> yeah, it is, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> um, but you know, a lot of it is like you really just have to be methodical. And you got to time it. You know what I mean? And you cannot overcook your steak. And right. you really have to have the temperature correct. So you've got to be like at least at 500 degrees or over to get the char marks and um, to cook it hot and fast. 
And yeah, you've got to check the temperature because, you know, most grills, anything you use, what the temperature says on the grill itself is going to be different than what's on those grates. Mm -hmm. So you've got to just be really methodical, really precise, and you time things. And so for us, hey, there's me. Check out the faux grass in the back that I, that was like a big project of mine last year <laughs> in my backyard. Is there grass so, back there? I don't see any it's grass. It's a faux boxwood ah, that I covered uh, the it. wall with. Nice. And it, it's a great way. You can order that stuff on Amazon. Anyway, and it's also about cutting the meat correctly. Um, and as you've probably heard, so there are, it's always ribeyes and yep, you yep. want to pick a steak with a good um, spinalis or like a, um, the cap, the ribeye cap, yep. um, which is like what you're looking for. So um, you want to cut the extra fat off and you want it to just look obviously nice and presentable. And I guess, you know, consistent um, or just, you know, you don't want any little pieces falling, you know, kind of hanging off. You know, you just need to present them with a good... Um, well-cut piece of meat, but also you don't want them to bite into it and get a big piece of fat right. first thing too. So a lot of the a lot of the, the guys are saying, you know, at like 550, you're going to do like two minutes one side, flip, two minutes one side, flip. And when you're flipping, you're working to get your, your hatch marks and then you do it on the other side. Um, and then, the, you know, the second set, you're going to base with butter and um, test and, you know, bleh. Probe it with a thermopen, and if you've reached 129, you need to move that baby off because oh. you've got to be at the perfect medium. And mm. then, you know, some people say rest seven minutes, some people say rest 10, everybody's got their things, but you just, you know, the thing is you just can't goof off and be posting on Instagram and not be <laughs> timing that stuff or you will overcook your sick. Yeah, <laughs> so, no doubt. <laughs> so that's what it's all about. So I hope I didn't give all my secrets away. So if I'm competing against you guys... But I don't think you have to. Uh, I've never competed, so I don't know if there's secrets. It's just called internet research. So there you go. But um, uh, you know, I think you don't have to have a rub. I mean, for me, why would you use a rub on something like steak when it's all about the steak? Um, this is not barbecue. So I see people using rubs, but I don't know if that's what needs to be done. Are you not? You're not going to use a rub. No, I am like a non. Oh, like, forget it. You guys see me? No, well, like, listen. You're gonna lose, you're gonna Robin. Like, what are you doing? If you're an accomplished cook, you don't need to buy someone's rub. You should be able to make your own rub. Yeah, but like, Robin, don't you understand what's happening here? It's it's what the judges are trained to expect. I mean, I understand. I fully understand what you're saying, and I am in your corner 100. percent But. I mean, if if all these guys are making money selling their rubs, do you think they're not putting their rubs on the steaks, turning it in for contests? If you don't put a rub on that steak, Robin, you're going to be really sorry, I think. Well, you're going to rub it with something, but it doesn't need to be a store-bought rub or from someone else. You need to figure that stuff out on your own. I mean, well, God bless it's you. a good steak. You've got to have good salt, good pepper, but you don't want to overpower it. It should be about the steak. Think about Dr. Barbecue. Like, if you read all his books and hear him, he's like, it's about the meat, not the, the stuff that goes on the meat. That's to enhance the flavor, not to cover it up. That's my opinion. Okay. I'm sticking to it. But so, um, I know you had a question about grill grates and, and all of that, too. And, you know, to your point about, like, yes, it's getting into a thing. Everybody's doing the same thing. Now it's getting kind of, like, standardized. Well, and I now, hold it. on a second. Like about let, let, let me ask this question a different way now since you were able to visualize it first and prepare an answer. Do you feel if you went to the shed and you brought something other than a PK grill and you used whatever grill grates were on that grill and something other than B&B &B charcoal, that you would have just as good a chance as winning as anybody else? I think, I don't think you have to have a PK, but I think you need to be good at getting your, your grill to a hot temperature. So in a grill that doesn't um, retain heat as well, you're probably going to have to use more charcoal um, and you're going to have to maybe fuss with it more. Uh, and I, you know, honestly, I was just, my dad and I were saying, I think people who come in with eggs would have a very good chance of doing well. Like you can do it, you can bring it. And you know, what's hard about that is that eggs are so darn heavy yeah, right. and they break easily or any, any ceramic grill for that matter. And, um, I've broken some 
and that's always very disappointing. Yeah. Um, so I think the time I got the most Instagram engagements ever was when I posted a picture of a broken egg and people were like, Oh my God. Um, because it's like, it is, that's how you feel. But I think like something like a mini egg could do really well. Mm -hmm. Right. So it doesn't have to be a PK. I think that they've been really involved with the steak with the SCA. And, and I don't know about the other ones from, from the beginning. And I think it's a good fit, but I think that, and I don't think it has to be and B B and B I've seen a lot of people have done well with Kingsford. You know, what you get with briquettes is predictability. All right. So this is going to go down January 25th. So next month we are going to get the full recap. We're going to see how you ended up rubbing the steak or if you caved at the very end and got somebody else's, you know, commercially made because somebody made you freaked out right before the beginning of the ah, steak thing, I whatever. We can't I wait to see. We can't wait. And then uh, we'll also talk about the 2019 food trends that you see coming up next month as well. Uh, in the meantime, go to grillgirl.com and check out what Robin and some of her contributors are up to. And once again, you will see her once per month right here on this show following Stephen Reichland. Robin, thanks so much. Oh, my gosh. You guys follow me, Grill Girl Robin. It's a pleasure to know you, and thanks for having me on, Greg. You're I'm welcome. so thankful for our friendship over the years. All right. Well, good luck. Bring back that Thank trophy, you. girl. All right. <laughs>